This is Dave E3OI and this is my LBS uh, radio that uh, we built as part of the park uh, project. Uh, the original LBS radio was designed by Pete Giuliano and uh, one of the problems is that uh, this layout is really good for exper experimentation but it's fairly large and one of the things I've been thinking about doing is how to shrink this down to a much more manageable size and uh, I've been thinking about making it modular maybe creating a backplane with modules which can plug into the backplane and make the radio much more smaller and compact and increase features so here's my first attempt at uh, making a modular backplane with modules for the LBS radio and I've run into some difficulties and I thought uh, I would uh, share those difficulties on uh, this uh, video. So here's the back plane. It's got a series of connectors which the various modules will, will plug in. I only have a first uh, five of them populated with headers. The rest of them have not been populated. There is a transmit receive uh, relay here that switches the power between transmit received to uh, 8 volt uh, regulators and a couple of spots where I can plug in now uh, low pass and band pass filters and I've created several modules uh, these modules here are bi-directional amplifier modules which are based on the uh, MAR 6SM uh, mimic uh, amplifier there's a crystal filter module here's my uh, mic and uh, audio amplifier module and as well here's my mixer and uh, bandpass filter module it's got a ADE1 and uh, uh, uses Han Summers uh, bandpass filter uh, module for the first test I've got one of my bi-directional uh, amplifiers which are using the Mar 6SM mimic uh, amplifiers uh, connected to the first slot and I've got my spectrum analyzer uh, connected to the uh, back plane. So the way I've got my spectrum analyzer configured it's in uh, uh, tracking generator mode so it's putting out a signal uh, a minus 20 dBm signal out of the tracking generator port that's being fed into my variable uh, attenuator here which is adding 30 dB of attenuation so the output uh, coming out of my uh, attenuator is minus 50 dBm which is being fed into the uh, the input of the amplifier so if I go ahead and I supply power to the back plane and power up the amplifier board we could go over to the spectrum analyzer and look at the response so you can see I've got a marker here at uh, 4.9 megahertz and it's saying uh, we're getting about uh, 17 dB of gain and it does roll off um, just uh, beyond or below one megahertz and that's because of the uh, capacitors of the blocking uh, DC blocking capacitors I've got at the input and output of the amplifier so for a single amplifier we're getting pretty good gain here so for this test I've got two uh, bi-directional amplifier boards plugged into the first two slots of the back plane and it's powered up and if you know each is supposed to be around 17 uh, I should be seeing well over you know um, 30 dB of gain if I go to the spectrum analyzer uh, I'm only seeing about 24 dB of gain and if you look I'm getting I'm not getting a level response and if you were to watch this for some time you'll see that that response shifts in time so some something's definitely wrong there and uh, the amplifiers uh, are not working very well in concert in this test I've added a crystal filter uh, module to the back plane and I'm using 4.9 megahertz crystals so I should be seeing a peak at around 4.9 uh, megahertz so if we go over to the spectrum analyzer and we take a look at what we're seeing at spectrum analyzer sure enough we're seeing a peak at 4.9 4.9 4.9 4.9 4.9 4.9 4.9 4.9 4.9 4.9 4.9 4.9 4.9 4.9 4.9 4.9 4.9 4.9 4.9 4.9 4.9 4.
4.9 megahertz. Uh, however, we're seeing a loss of minus 4 dBm, and since the amplifier is supposed to be putting out uh, 17 dB of gain, that means we're seeing over, you know, 22, 23 dB of loss uh, from that uh, uh, con configuration. So then again, there, again, this is an example showing that something is definitely wrong with this backplane uh, implementation. In this test, I've added a second amplifier board. So now I've got the crystal filter board sandwiched between two amplifier boards, two, di two bi-directional amplifier boards. And if we take a look at what's going on at the spectrum analyzer, we see some very strange behavior. Number one, we're seeing a resonance here around one megahertz. And uh, if I put the peak on here, and I look at the peak table. So I've got peaks here, uh, four is at 1.2 megahertz. And I've got peaks, uh, look at uh, various resonant frequencies of uh, 4.9 megahertz so there's some kind of oscillation going on in this amplifier and if I was to go and jiggle the boards you'll see some really strange behavior you'll see some oscillations coming in so uh, it's obvious that the connectors are contributing to some problems but it uh, pretty much stabilizes when I stop touching it but the minute I go in and I move it you know the connectors are adding uh, some some problems there but then it uh, smooths out so there I've managed to touch it and the those resonant peaks have gone away however I've got one huge uh, peak at uh, what's that 1.3 megahertz so it's obvious the, uh, these ample uh, they're just going into oscillation so I think these uh, bi-directional amp boards are actually uh, oscillating the gain is much too high and I've got very poor design of those modules. So I think I'm going to have to go back to the drawing board here. Here's a second attempt at uh, building a, a backplane for my modular LBS project. So in this case my modules are uh, different from the last modules in that the input and output flows in from one end out the other end whereas with my last modules uh, last module the input flows in one pin and comes out another pin and those pins may be very close together and I'm getting uh, some signal crosstalk between the pins so in this case I've got my input and output pins separated uh, by a fair distance here so here I've got two amplifier modules. Uh, the first one has only got one MAR6SM amplifier and this amplifier has two. So uh, theoretically this module should give me twice the gain of that uh, module. So I've got the backplane powered up and I've got my spectrum analyzer connecting it up and uh, I've got my Spectrum analyzer set up in a tracking generator mode with the tracking generator fed to my um, variable uh, attenuator and I've got it set to 30 dB so I've got uh, minus 50 dBm signal being fed into the amplifier and if I look at the response here you'll see at 4.9 megahertz I'm seeing 21 dB of gain for a single MAR 6SM module and uh, interestingly enough the data sheet says that you should be getting around I think the minimum of 20 dB of gain from the module so I think this is a much better uh, module I've got however you see that it uh, falls off towards uh, uh, 30 megahertz and if I put my marker table on you'll see here at uh, what's that 28 megahertz we're seeing around 15, 16 dB of gain. So we're seeing a, a, a fair bit of uh, drop off as uh, we increase the frequency. And that's probably because of the um, fact that I put a ferrite bead uh, in 
a series with the amplifier to try and tame some of the oscillation and that ferrite bead is probably causing some attenuation of the higher frequency uh, signals. In this test I've got the module that contains the two uh, Mimic Amar 6SM uh, amplifiers connected to the backplane. I've got the uh, spectrum analyzer connected, the board's powered up. So let's take a look at what we're seeing on the spectrum analyzer. And if you take a look here, we're seeing maximum of pretty darn close to 40 dB, 39 uh, dB of gain around uh, 15 megahertz, uh, and it tapers off uh, towards higher frequencies and lower frequencies. So if I go down to about 4.9 megahertz, This is about 4.9 megahertz. I'm seeing 38 uh, dB of gain, which is a lot greater than what I saw in the previous uh, backplane with the two uh, bi-directional amps uh, connected together. So here I'm seeing much, much better uh, performance. This test, I've got both modules connected. I've got the two, the module with the two uh, Mars 6S amplifiers, and then the module with a single. Uh, amplifier and uh, let's go take a look and see what the spectrum analyzer is showing and we're seeing here close to 60 dB again but we're seeing a lot of gibberish a lot of uh, uh, oscillation here so it looks as if uh, I'm really driving these amplifiers well beyond their capabilities and I'm seeing a fair bit of, um, of uh, oscillation there possible because um, the amplifiers uh, are very sensitive to any kind of uh, SWR issues and that could be contributing to the uh, the oscillation here that I'm seeing. In this test I've inserted one of Hans Sommer's uh, bandpass filters between the two modules and that's a uh, 40 meter bandpass filter and uh, uh, what this will do is this will ensure that you know each amplifier is seeing a 50 ohm termination. So let's go over to the spectrum analyzer and let's see what uh, performance we're seeing here. And uh, we're seeing uh, you know the characteristic hump of a bandpass filter, and we're seeing you know the uh, it's down around 45 uh, dB, and it's saying 50. Uh, 6 uh, dB of gain we're seeing at the peak uh, centered around uh, 7 megahertz so we're seeing uh, you know uh, about uh, 56 down to about 30 33 so we're seeing almost uh, 20 dB of uh, gain across that hump as a result of uh, the amplifiers so it's very interesting that we're getting much better performance from this style of backplane versus this this style of backplane. And uh, some of the reasons or, or some of the differences between the two backplanes that may cause this one to uh, work a little better is that each module has its own voltage regulator uh, here. And on this module, it's uh, using an onboard uh, one common voltage regulator. So he, with these modules we may have better power supply uh, decoupling. The other reason is that the input and output uh, for this module versus this module is fair different. It's fairly different. The input and output for this module are two pins that are very close together and here it's separated very far and as well you can clearly see it here, the trace between the input and output is fairly linear and straight. Whereas if you look at the traces on this module, the there's lots of bends and lots of T's and so that may be adding inductances and uh, adding all kinds of uh, you know reflections and uh, I believe these amplifiers are very sensitive to uh, a high uh, SWR. And so I think it's uh, with this layout, it's um, 
it's much more well behaved. The other, the other reason as well too is I've got ferrite beads attached between the two modules, the two uh, amplifier modules here, and that's going to tame any kind of uh, feedback that's going back and forth between uh, the amplifiers. Uh, similarly here you could see a ferrite bead that's uh, on this amplifier as well. So I think that's uh, helping to tame the oscillation that might uh, come with uh, a high gain. I'll be continuing to work on this style module. Uh, my next step will be now to make these modules bi-directional because right now these uh, modules are only unidirectional. They only go in one way. So I'll build this backplane out to have a uh, bi-directional uh, amp amplifiers. So that concludes this video and thank you very much for watching.